Did you think that switching from Claude would be easy? I thought so, but it wasn't. Even with over 20 years of experience, I struggled with GPT-5. In fact, I publicly called GPT-5 trash, but then something weird happened almost without my permission. And since then, I haven't used Claude code once. But I do wish I had understood the four different variations of GPT-5 earlier. So to help you avoid my mistakes, here are the discoveries that I made in the past three weeks that led me to abandon the king of AI coding models. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Rob and I've been a coder for over 20 years. But now I teach people how to build their ideas with AI in ways that even non-technical people can understand. I do this here on YouTube and inside of my new AI coding workshop, which you can check in the description down below. Listen, Sonnet and Opus have been the undisputed kings. Meta, you know, the company that makes Facebook, literally abandoned their own AI models to use Claude. But as of today, GPT-5 has entered the top five coding models on Open Router. And just this week, it rose by 27%, while Claude, Sonnet and Opus lost eight and 6% respectively. And after two, almost three weeks of testing exclusively GPT-5, I understand why. Let's be honest about where we have been. For months, Claude has been the only series option. Sonnet and Opus have dominated everything. When even your competitors switch to your product, you've won. And that's exactly what Meta did. They could have used anything else. GPT, their own Llama, Google Gemini, but they chose Claude. Every series developer I know uses Claude. Every AI coding tutorial on YouTube assumes Claude. It has been the standard AI models to build apps. But then August hits and OpenAI drops GPT-5. The reaction? Brutal. Every influencer, including myself, absolutely destroyed it. It's too slow. It over-engineers everything. It can't follow instructions. I literally tweeted, GPT-5 is officially over. Here's the actual tweet, by the way. The consensus was immediate and nearly universal. Stick with Claude. GPT-5 was dead on arrival, or so we thought. But here is where things get then interesting, because about three weeks ago, I wanted to try Cursor again, and GPT-5 happened to be free at the time. Even then, when it stopped being free, I switched to Windsurf, which still had a free version of it, just experimenting and using it, you know? And I used GPT-5 to plan and then switched to Sonnet to implement and it felt good, you know? It felt great. I really enjoyed it. Then I noticed something weird. About five days into this whole experiment, I wasn't switching to Claude anymore that often. And on day eight, still on GPT-5, I realized that I didn't switch back at all and that GPT-5 had quietly become my primary, primary coding model. I documented all of this on Twitter, thinking I was going crazy. But then people started to confirm my suspicions and there were a lot of reasons for it. OpenAI brought out Codex CLI, which is the Claude Code competitor, which despite me previously saying, and there's a tweet somewhere on the screen, <laughs> that it's trash, actually became good and it was now included in your chat gpt plus subscriptions with very good limits so a lot of people just started experimenting and so this quiet migration started slowly happening while influencers would still preach claude developers and people that actually build apps secretly started switching. So here is my own experience with GPT-5 and there are four different model variations, one of them being kind of secret right now, by the way, and how I use all of them for a specific purpose and how I recommend that you use them too. So first we have GPT-5 High. This you can think of as your architect. It can totally go away and sometimes think for like five to 10 minutes, but when you need deep reasoning, when you need to truly understand your entire code base, think for a brand new heavy feature or bug fixing, nothing will be GPT-5 high right now. It is the standard for best understanding your app. But before we continue to the other models, there's something that a lot of people don't understand and no one has really clarified yet. And that is really important to understand. I currently use Cursor and I really like it, but one of the reasons why I use it is that it shows you how far you are in your context window right now. And here's the thing, when you start with a solid prompt on GPT-5 High, it is very possible that a single prompt gets you 
20, 30 or over 40% into the context window, which is pretty wild. And so people started saying, oh, this is stupid. GPT-5 is immediately at 40% context limit. What's up with this? This is useless. Here is what these people don't understand. GPT-5 or GPT-5 in general starts with extremely low confidence. It assumes that it knows nothing, which is in stark contrast to Claude models. So whenever you start a new chat, it has to build up confidence by deeply understanding your application. But then follow-up prompts will maybe only add one or two percent to the context window usage. And not only that, but the models actually get significantly faster the more you start chatting as long as you stay on topic in that chat, if that makes sense. So GPT-5 high consuming this much of your context window early is not a bug at all. It's intentional design to make decisions much higher confidence. What if I told you that there was a coding agent that performs better than even Claude code? Well, there might be, and it's called Warp, which just became the number one AI coding agent on Terminal Bench, and it even ranks top five on SWE Bench Verified, where it competes directly with the world's best AI models. What makes Warp different is that it's a standalone app built from the ground up for agentic AI coding. This thing can literally do it all. Set up, build, review and deploy everything in one app without ever having to context switch between an IDE, Stack Overflow and an LLM client. It can even run multiple coding agents in parallel so you can work even faster. And listen, I still believe that full IDEs have their place, but the trend towards terminal and prompt based coding is real and it becomes literally more popular every day. I personally use terminals for a lot of my daily work and many engineers and vibe coders choose warp for this instead of traditional editors like Cursor and Windsurf. So download Warp today for free and try it for yourself. The link is in the description down below and thank you Warp for sponsoring this part of the video. Moving on to GPT-5 or a better name would be GPT-5 Medium. It is the model variation that I use 70% of the time because it has the perfect balance between reasoning and still executing at a reasonable pace. It is really the model that I use for almost everything and after you really understand that the model speeds up as it gathers more confidence, it becomes a really great default model option. And I recommend that you use it as a drop-in replacement for Opus because you can create very solid plans with it and even then let it execute, which is great if you get annoyed by constantly needing to switch models. And then lastly, before the secret variation, there's GPT-5 Low, which for the first week I used a lot because I thought it was the closest thing to Sonnet because it was much faster and didn't spend this much time thinking. And once you had a like a plan in place from GPT-5 or GPT-5 high, you could then switch to GPT-5 low without much overthinking because it focuses on execution more than thinking, right? But because I now know that the model actually speeds up over time, I usually just stick to GPT-5 instead. But remember how I said that there was a secret variation? Well, it's actually not really that secret, but it's the only one that is not available anywhere else except for the Codex CLI, which again is the OpenAI competitor to Anthropic's Claude Code. And that model variation is called GPT-5 Minimal. Minimal because it is the truest competitor to Sonnet in terms of pure implementation because there is minimal thinking involved. So if you start with the GPT-5 high or GPT-5 medium plan and then switch to GPT-5 minimal, the execution should be very fast. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to test this yet because for now it is not available in Cursor or Windsor for anywhere else except for Codex CLI. But if you do use Codex CLI, which you probably should because now it is included in your chat GPT subscription, then going from high or medium to minimal is probably the way to go. So in actual real world terms, what does that mean? Well, here's my workflow. For high stake tasks or bug finding, I usually use GPT-5 high and then switch to GPT-5 medium or GPT-5, whatever it is called for you. Then for everyday tasks that are less 
important. I plan with GPT-5 and then either stick to GPT-5 because it does get faster or I switch to GPT-5 low, but I haven't done that a lot less over the last week or two. And as a general rule, subject to how important the task is, I either switch from high to medium or from medium to low. This is how I use them right now. The biggest takeaway that I had, and I really feel bad saying this because <laughs> it makes me sound like a shill, but I just had significantly fewer bugs. I don't want to say none, but like nearly none at all since switching to these models. And yes, they are a bit slower, right? Especially when you start a new chat, but the output for them is just so good that it's worth using, learning, and optimizing. And optimization, well, let's talk about what that actually means, because there are things that you should consider. With Sonnet and Opus models, they're extremely confident too confident. They will say stuff like, oh, you're absolutely right. Let's do this. Speaking of, you're absolutely right. But then they will go fix a bug and they didn't realize that the same bug pattern occurred in like three other places throughout this whole app. And that happens because they didn't spend the required time researching and like reasoning and going through the code base to understand this. GPT-5 is different that way because it starts with zero confidence and then it starts researching, right? It gathers information, it understands context, it sees patterns, and then it finally says something and that's usually correct. But there are ways that you need to tame GPT-5 in the same way that we had to tame Sonnet 3.7 if you had the chance to use it way back in the day, like two, three months ago. <laughs> For example, in almost every single prompt, I asked GPT-5 to consider the context of my application. I asked it explicitly not to over-engineer a specific solution because the page that I work on might have like five to 10,000 visitors and it's not like the next Microsoft that needs to be optimized in the same way as a page as big would. I also explicitly pointed out that I like simple solutions. I actually have some cursor rules in place that yes, they would also work in Sonnet and Opus, but GPT-5 actually follows them for much longer into the context window because like I can do this for like 50, 60% of the context window and GPT-5 will still remember while Sonnet and Opus will have long forgotten what happened in the beginning of a conversation. And that happens all the time. It is super easy to test. And so look, this is not a doom and gloom Claude video saying that Claude is dead. But, oh shit, I hope this will not be clipped, you know, but for the first time, it has competition, real competition. And that competition might actually be better for now than Claude. It is for me, and it might be for you. And here is what all of this means for you. While everyone still defaults to using Claude, you now have a real opportunity here, a chance to get ahead with a model that most people declared dead on arrival about a month ago. I encourage you to use things like Codex CLI, Windsurf, Cursor, whatever it is, and just force yourself to use GPT-5 the way that I told you in this video. Because if this shift is real, I want you to be ahead of the curve, not playing catch up in two months from now. And if you want to go deeper, check out my new AI coding workshop in which I use GPT-5 to build a real app with you. And I'll teach you everything that you need to know to build and launch your first application in a single day.